Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. I'm Natalie McClatchy and today I'm going to be talking to you about spanning trees, minimum spanning trees, and how to find those using Prim's and Kruskal's algorithms. This is part of Unit 4 for Year 12 General Maths in Queensland. So let's get started. Now, if you would remember from your QCAA syllabus, if you've read it, that it states that our learning goal here is that we're going to identify a minimum spanning tree in a weighted connected graph. Example, using Prim's algorithm. Now, in this particular video, I'm going to choose to s explore a different algorithm as well, Kruskal's algorithm. It'd be a good idea for you to know how to use both of those. You may prefer one to the other after you've had a go at both. But Prim's is listed in the QCAAs as an example, but a lot of the textbooks have picked up on that and only shown that as the only method that's out there. There are actually numerous methods out there, and I've just chosen to take you through two today. Okay, so firstly we're going to engage in a little bit of new vocabulary and I've got some beautiful pictures of trees on the right hand side. This is taken from a forest that, it was, that I was in last year in Scotland. But we're looking at a different kind of tree today. It's one on networks and it's a simple connected graph that has no circuits. So that means is that we um, don't have any um, situations like we've seen with some of our other graphs where we've got a whole um, Basically, it's a circuit in, inside the network. We want to make sure that no, all those circuits are removed. So any pair of vertices in a tree is connected by a unique path. And if you just look at the diagram below and find a pair of vertices, there's only one way to get between the two of them. So that means there's no parallel edges and no loops. The number of vertices is going to be always one less than the number of edges. And you could verify that by counting that if you wished. So we've got a little formula here. This is not on the QCAA formula sheet, so you do need to remember this one. So edges equals vertices take away one. So if you want to pause the video here, you can count up all those edges and vertices there and verify that for yourself. Okay, so we've got on this one, I've done it for you, nine vertices, eight edges, nine take away eight is one, so it works. Okay, so we're now going to talk about something called a spanning tree. It is a subgraph of a larger graph including all the vertices of the original graph. Now that sounds like a bit of a mouthful, doesn't make a whole lot of sense just yet, but I'm going to take you into very quickly what a spanning tree is. The word spanning means to extend from side to side. So if you think of a bridge, a bridge spans from one shore to another. And that's what a spanning tree does. It takes in all of the vertices, but it doesn't necessarily have to take in all of the original edges. So I'm going to take you through some distinctions here. So firstly, this is a graph. It's not a tree. So here is a subgraph, because we've talked about subgraphs on this particular slide. So this is a subgraph of the original graph, but it's not a tree because um, there is vertex B missing. So it's not a spanning tree at all, because remember, we have to include every vertex. Also, this is a subgraph. We've taken out a couple of connections there, but once again, it's not a tree either. It is spanning because it takes all the vertices in, but it's not a tree because there is one big circuit. Now, in this case, we've got another subgraph of our original graph, and this one is a spanning tree. Notice that it takes all of the vertices into place, and there are no loops or circuits. So this is the difference between all the different types of subgraphs we could have. This is the only one in those examples that's a spanning tree. Now, spanning trees, you might be thinking, why on earth do I need to know about these? Well, they are useful to analyse network connections. And ideally, we want to find the lowest cost pathway to pass through a network. So that might be lowest cost in terms of a process. It might be lowest cost in terms of travelling kilometres so and distances and things like that. So that's why we want to understand and not have to do loops and circuits because that obviously can add extra dimensions and cost to a network. So we would use that by removing edges from the circuits to find that lowest co cost pathway such that we get to every vertex in our network but not having to travel on edges multiple times. So here's an example of a network. It's a bit more complex than the ones I've shown you so far. And we're going to turn this one into a minimum spanning tree by removing some edges. So what I need to make sure is that I'm including every vertex. I want to get all the way from H over to D and E. So I need to make sure that I've got just enough edges to do the job, but take out everything that is unnecessary. So firstly, I've taken out that connection between G and H. I'm going to remove little connections one at a time because those connections that I've just taken out formed circuits. And that's what I'm trying to do is remove some of those circuits. 
So now I've taken out AG, that removes that circuit up the top there, and I to I to F, yes, a little bit of sun in my eyes here. So we're taking out these circuits one at a time. Now I've taken out E to D and I've taken out that last one. I could have also done it differently and taken out E to F. So there's no right or wrong way to do this as long as we are removing the edges that are unnecessary because they create circuits. So now I have a minimum spanning tree shown on the right hand side. I've spanned all the way from H over to D and E and I haven't got any more circuits in my network. Now, we're, I'm going to show you an algorithm that we can use to do this in a way that actually produces the lowest cost for our network, because sometimes we have waiting on our trees. An algorithm, it sounds like a big word, people panic when they see it, but it's simply a process or a set of rules that we follow in problem solving. So you've noticed on some of my other videos, if you've watched them, that I always follow usually a four or five step process, write the formula, state the variable, substitute into the formula, show your working, write a statement. That's an algorithm, it's a process. And we're gonna follow a similar sort of process using Prim's algorithm and Kruskal's algorithm to find the minimum spanning tree. So here is um, Yarnick, he developed Prim's algorithm. I'm not sure why they didn't call it Yarnick's algorithm. It's also called that, but it's mostly commonly known as Prim's, and I don't really know who Prim was, but it all happened in the early 20th century. And then later on, Kruskal, who's a more modern mathematician, he's developed Kruskal's algorithm. Both methods are ways that we can find what's called the minimum spanning tree on that connected weighting graph. And that minimum spanning tree is all about finding the lowest cost connection right across from one end of the network to the other. So with Prim's algorithm, I'm gonna take you through the steps first and then I'm gonna show you with this particular diagram. So firstly, we start at any point with low weighted edges. So you're gonna be looking for a vertex on your graph that has edges around it that have got low weights. And I think you can probably see which one I'm gonna start at just by looking. And then I'm gonna choose edges one at a time to remove that have low weightings. And then I'm gonna keep the low weighting ones in and get rid of the big weighting ones. And then I'm gonna continue till I've got rid of all the vertexes and that I've got no loops. So let's try that using this particular algorithm. And I've added my own sub-step into the algorithm. We're gonna start by just redrawing all of those vertices without the edges. So remember, we can't move the vertices into different positions. They could represent geographical locations. We've got to keep them in the same spots. But I'm gonna redraw those dots. And it's always, like I said, a good idea in my previous videos to have the equipment of a ruler, a lead pencil or an eraser an erasable pen or an erasable highlighter that you can use to do this process. Okay, so now my next step is to pick a vertex with the, the low weighted edges. And notice on the right hand side, I've circled G because G is surrounded by um, edges or pathways that are all got a low weighting. So that's where I'm gonna start. Then what I'm gonna do is progressively choose the edges to keep that have got the low weightings. So you notice on the left hand side now, I've kept three of those edges they've all got a weighting of one. So um, at this point, I'm pretty safe. I haven't caused any circuits to take place, but if I was to draw EF in, which has also got a low weighting, that would cause a problem because that would give me a circuit and that would then not be a spanning tree. So my next step is we need to get now, when basically with Prim's algorithm, what we're eventually doing is we're looking at each pathway where we end up and making the choice. Where do I go next from here? So if I was at, um, at B or at G, I'm wanting to get all the way out to C. So I need to make sure I choose the pathway that has the lowest um, weighting to it. So I could get to C from G and that would give me a weighting of two. I could get to C from B, that would give me a weighting of three. I have to choose the one that's lowest and that would be CG, so two is lower than three. Okay, so then I have my next choice that I've got to make. Now I need to span out to D. I can get there from C, and that would be a distance of two, or I could get there from E, that would be a distance of three. So remember, there was never an original pathway from G, so that's not an option for us to put in there. So I'm gonna choose one with the shortest pathway, that is CD, which is two. And then, I need to continue with this process and think about all of the decision, decisions I've got to make to get to each vertex, continue on until there are no loops. 
So now I'm moving out to A. I could have got to A through F or through B. I've chosen to go through B because 2 is smaller than 3. Okay, so now I've drawn in those edges. I've worked up to the shortest edge. Okay, so that was Prim's algorithm. We're going to do the same thing now with Kruskal's algorithm, which is a little bit um, different steps. It seems a little bit similar, but it's a little bit different. So firstly, we draw in those edges that are short, that don't make a loop, and then we work up from the smallest edge to the largest edge until we're done. I'll show you how that works. So once again, we're going to start by redrawing those vertices in without the edges. So it's the same sub-step sub for both, the Cauchy sub-step. And then with Kruskal's algorithm, I'm going to draw in the shortest edges that don't form a loop. Now, you might think to yourself, well, that's exactly what we did with Prim's, but this is a little bit different. This time, I'm actually looking on the graph for the lowest number. So I'm looking on here, I've got a choice of one, two or three. I'm going to draw in all the ones, as long as I don't make a loop. So I could have done it slightly differently if I wanted to. I might have done BG, GF and EF instead of EG, because they are all ones choice is mine so I've just chosen to go with these ones so I'm drawing in the ones then I'm going to move up and draw the twos so I've got my connections here CDs are two CGs are two um, BAs are two so this is a little bit different as you can see to prims where prims was where I got to each point in the in the graph and then I made a decision to go the shortest here I'm just choosing let's do the short sides now then the next shortest then the next shortest so as you can guess we've done the twos now it's time to do the threes well, I can't do AF at all because it's going to create a loop, so I'm going to ignore AF. It's a three. I can't do BC because that would create a loop as well. And I can't do DE because that's going to create a loop. So that means I'm done with the threes. I'm not going to draw anything in there. And then I look at the next highest weighting, and there is none. So that basically means I just double check that I've got all of my vertices in. Yes, I've got all of them. I've done my spanning tree using Kruskal's algorithm. So this is a fairly simple diagram. Practice with some other different types using both Prim's and Kruskal's algorithm and find the one that works for you. So like I said, that was an easy one. We automatically didn't even have to worry about the threes. They were automatically excluded. So now I'm going to take you through a more complicated example. This is where I have to create a minimum spanning tree for graph A. So first of all, I take my little sub-step and I draw in all of the vertices into roughly the same positions. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at my lowest vertex edge with the lowest weighting. So I've got GD, that's a 6, so that's the lowest number in my network, so I can draw that one in. Now the next number that's higher than 6 is obviously going to be the number 7, and I've got, looking at my network, I've only got one choice there, that's EG, so I've drawn that in. And now I've got um, 8 because the next biggest number is 8 so that's from E to D well that's going to be a problem that will create a loop so I can't draw there but I can go from B to G that's 8 as well now I look on my network the next biggest number is the number 9 so I can see DA that's going to be okay it's not going to create a loop then I look for the next biggest number well there's no 10s there's an 11 that's A to B but that will create a loop so I can't draw that one in so I ignore the 11. The next biggest number is 12. That is BD. That's going to create a loop, so I can't draw that one in either. The next biggest number after 12 is 14, going out to A to C. So that's fine. I can put that one in. Then I look on my diagram again. D to C is 18. That will create a circuit. Can't draw it in. The next biggest number is E to C, 22. That will create a circuit as well. So I'm actually finished. I've created my minimum spanning tree for graph A using Kruskal's algorithm. So um, that's all we've got time for really with Prim's algorithm and Kruskal's algorithm. Like I said before, great idea for you to go and experiment using both methods and find the method that you prefer. I would also recommend if you're doing your external exams with the QCAA that you actually write on your paper when you're doing a minimum spanning tree what algorithm you're using, whether it's Prim's or Kruskal's. It's an important thing to note as well. We'll just go back to the previous slide. That this is what we call a greedy algorithm. Both Prim's and um, Kruskal's algorithms are called greedy algorithms. And the reason for that is that we're only looking at the small picture as we're building our minimum spanning tree. Let me explain a little bit more. We're starting at one point and then we're looking at the next best decision to make, whether that's the next highest edge or going to a vertex and choosing between two edges and taking the lowest of the two. We're not actually choosing 
from a big standpoint, uh, looking over the whole network, what is the best thing for that whole network? So that's something to bear in mind that that's one of the limitations of these two algorithms and, algorithms and why they're called greedy algorithms because they take that first best choice for that first choice. I hope that makes sense. I hope I haven't talked you into circles. Thank you for joining me and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Have a great day.